The toy maker is immortal. He's lasted for thousands of years. Very occasionally, of course, he loses the game and then he has to pay the price. What have you done? Stop meddling with my shit! It isn't what I have done, but what you have not done. You must finish the game. When someone thinks they can outwit the maker of the games, do you think a grand total of two can cause me to shiver when I played against the guardians of time and space and shrank them into voodoo dolls? I challenge you to a game. Make your last move, Doctor. Make your last move. Hello, and welcome back to the History Of series. It's been quite a while, so I thought why not revive the series with a rather recent villain that has a history longer than most would suspect. I am of course talking about the Celestial Toymaker, or the Toymaker, depending on how you want to title them. So without further ado, let's get right into it. According to the Sixth Doctor, much of the Toymaker's past was a matter of speculation, not even the Time Lords were able to confirm the Toymaker's true origins, as anyone who researched into him became tired of all the games they had to face along the way. Indeed, one account showed him acknowledging different origins in conversation with Adric and with the Doctor, once even altering the story mid-conversation. The first Doctor believed the Toymaker to be a native of the same universe as himself, being Enspace, and as having only lasted for thousands of years by the time of their first encounter. He told Stephen Taylor and Dodo Chaplet that this Toymaker was immortal, like all Toymakers, explaining that the urge to create toys that are ultimately destructive was unfortunately part of their universe, such that the world was metaphorically full of destructive Toymakers like him. In contrast, the Sixth Doctor claimed that the Toymaker originated in a universe before his own, and was hauled into the primary universe by some kind of catastrophe, being immune to the usual laws of physics as a result. This echoed the Sixth and Seventh Doctor's accounts of the nature of the Great Old Ones. In face, some accounts claimed that the Toymaker was the crystal-coloured Guardian of Dreams, counterbalancing the other five Guardians of Time, the most powerful of the Great Old Ones who had survived their universe's destruction, where they themselves had been the equivalent of Time Lords. Six Guardians were stated in one account as having been in attendance for the creation of the universe. In another account, the Sixth Doctor was drawn to Blackpool, believing that he had detected the presence of the Nexus of the Primeval Cauldron of space-time itself. Upon coming face to face with the Toymaker, he realised that he had been detecting the Toymaker himself, and deduced that the Toymaker had set up the space-time vortex, to which he corrected, Doctor, I am the space-time vortex. According to the Eighth Doctor, the Toymaker originated in the Dark Places, with the Twelfth Doctor similarly claiming that the Toymaker was spawned in the Chaos before time. Likewise, the Seventh Doctor described the Toymaker as an Elder God, originating from the old times at the beginning of the universe. In fact, one account equated him with the Chinese trickster god No Cha, depicting him as one of the magical entities from the chaotic time before this, who had survived the Time Lord's imposition of rationality upon the universe. Only when Rationality's foothold on the universe lessened, such as during the reign of the Carnival Queen, was the Toymaker able to descend from his realm outside time and space, and interfere in the physical world once again. In contrast, one account mentioned the chap who became obsessed with games, and took to dressing like a Chinese Mandarin, as one of the elder races from the original Palimpsest universe. In this account, this original state of reality before the Time Lord's interference was one of perfect linearity, and it was only after the introduction of time travel to the universe that various members of the Elder Races went mad, and turned their powers to evil or mischief. While trying to win Adric to his side in an account which otherwise treated him as a great old one and guardian, the Toymaker claimed, I too am from another universe, Adric, born elsewhere and forced to live out my life in a place not my own. Later in the conversation with Adric, he seemingly changed his story, now claiming to be in voluntary exile similar to the Doctor, though he specified he was not a Time Lord. However, this same account also saw the Toymaker identifying himself as a Great Old One and the Guardian of Dreams to the Doctor and Stefan. Yet another account simply suggested that the Toymaker originated from outside time and space. One account saw the 14th Doctor describe the Toymaker as an elemental force with the power of a god, and suggested that he originated outside the universe, he described the Toymaker's domain as another realm, a hollow beneath the under-universe. 
In this account, the Toymaker and the Doctor both suggested that he had never properly entered the Doctor's world before his battle with the 14th Doctor. In a confession to the 6th Doctor, the Toymaker stated that he eventually got bored of thousands of millennia of pointless creation and destruction in the beginning of the universe, eventually finding a new source of amusement in games. According to the First Doctor, the Toymaker succeeded in creating a universe of his own, entirely in his own vision called the Celestial Toy Room, where he would manipulate people and turn them into his playthings. The Toymaker and his games became notorious throughout the universe, as he spread his influence to attract people into his world and try to make them part of it. Out of boredom, the Toymaker began spending centuries of his time wandering the Earth and sampling its various games, frequently challenging humans from across history. He lured people from a variety of cultures to the Toy Room, turning them into toys when they inevitably lost his games. One such occasion, he lured Gaylord Leveret, a professional gambler from the Old West, from his steamboat to the Mississippi, challenging him to a game of cards. When Gaylord's luck began to sour, he attempted to mark the cards to even the score, but, aware of his deception, the Toymaker proclaimed that the game was forfeit, and transformed him into one of his many toys after briefly playing along. He later challenged a Roman soldier, leading him past the toy version of Gaylord. In the 18th century, Senling told stories of his own abduction by the trickster god No Cha, who he beat in an unearthly game of cards. The Time Lord's databanks and the Toymaker during the Doctor's early life described him only as a vague legend, with some reports implying that there existed several Toymakers rather than just one. When the first Doctor investigated the legend with his friends, Rallon and Millennia, in a stolen TARDIS, they arrived in the Toy Room and found the Toymaker in a dormant, disembodied state. However, he managed to possess Rallon and make Millennia into one of his living toys, with the Doctor able to best him with the help of Dimova. Knowing that he would eventually become a more worthy opponent, given time to mature, the Toymaker allowed the Doctor to leave the Toy Room. After compiling a list of games to play, the Toymaker drew the Doctor's TARDIS to his realm, so he could make the Doctor play his games again with his new companions, Stephen Taylor and Dodo Chaplet, but arranged things so that the Toy Room would vanish completely at their moment of victory, leaving him the only survivor and the TARDIS team his subjects forever. However, Rallon was able to keep the Toymaker's powers in check, and ensured that he abided by the rules of his games to help the Doctor escape. The Doctor soon outwit the Toymaker again and escaped, leaving his realm in chaos and the Doctor believing that the Toy Room no longer existed. But the Toymaker later stated that he'd actually been banished to the Aether for millennia after his defeat. Having been banished to the Aether, he spent millennia searching for a way to best the Doctor, eventually finding that the Imagineum would be able to create a version of the Doctor under his own will that was more powerful than the original. As the Imagineum had been in a spacecraft that crashed on Earth and was looted by the Knights Templar, the Toymaker played and won a game of Canasta with a descendant of the Templar living in 1990, named Marwood, placing him under his will and the Imagineum in his possession. However, Marwood's adjutant, Felix, stole a component of the device called the Focus, and entrusted it with Maxwell Edison and Izzy Sinclair, before he was killed by Marwood in a mirror version of Stockbridge the Toymaker built, while keeping the real village in a macro-dimensional linkage device resembling a snow globe. When the Eighth Doctor arrived in the fake Stockbridge, the Toymaker confronted him when he, Max, and Izzy tried to retreat to his TARDIS. While the Doctor and Izzy were able to escape from his clutches, Max was captured, and taken to the macro-dimensional linkage device that the Toymaker had sealed the real Stockbridge in. When the Doctor and Izzy mounted a rescue from the Toy Room, the Toymaker had Marwood and his dolls capture them, and forced them to play games of Snakes and Ladders and Hangman before the Toymaker unveiled his possession of the Imagineum. The Toymaker placed Izzy and Max in a game of Mousetrap, and created his duplicate of the Doctor, placing them in a game of gladiatorial chess. Despite his duplicate being physically superior to him, the Doctor was able to convince his duplicate not to fight, by explaining that he was merely just another one of the Toymaker's playthings. After seeing the Toymaker murder Marwood after growing bored of him, the duplicate of the Doctor was left with no doubt that he too would eventually befall the same fate, so he turned on the Toymaker, sending him and his duplicate to compete in a perpetual stalemate in the dark places where the Toymaker originated. As the Toy Room began to dissipate, the Doctor, Izzy, and Max fled, while the Doctor's duplicate remained so he could destroy the Imagineum, and the Doctor restored Stockbridge after Max took the snow globe with him from the Toy Room. When the Toy Room began to break down due to its ancient age, the Toymaker feared that he would be loose in a wild, unforgiving universe, thus luring the Twelfth Doctor and Clara Oswald on the pretense of a party hosted by Susan Foreman, wanting to steal the Doctor's TARDIS to keep the Toy Room contained. 
After the toy replicas of some of the Doctor's previous companions failed to capture him, the Toymaker flew a toy biplane towards him and Clara. As the Toymaker's powers over the realm was waning, the Doctor was able to see some control, causing the biplane to crash by hitting a giant bauble. The Doctor and the Toymaker then battled with toy armies until he realised they were equally matched, deciding to propose a game of truth or dare. It was in this game the Toymaker revealed his fears about the toy room's collapse, and, thinking he was outsmarting the Doctor, dared him to hand over the TARDIS. As the TARDIS materialised around the toy room, the Doctor and Clara travelled to the control room, rebuilding the toy room from within the Zero Room, and ejecting it into space. The Doctor had felt compassion for the Toymaker, for they weren't so dissimilar, a lonely god drifting through time and space in his magical toy box. When the Toymaker discovered that Rallon's body was dying after centuries of existence, he set out to ensnare the Doctor again, and hatched a complex plot to turn his companions against him and absorb the Fifth Doctor as a new host, but was thwarted when Rallon forced himself to undergo multiple regenerations consecutively, with the trauma expelling the Toymaker from his body. A projection of Rallon's potential future self then merged with the Toymaker to ensure that his full powers continued to be kept under control. While waiting for his toy room to repair itself, the Toymaker decided to take his servant Stefan to Earth to seek amusement, deciding to go to Blackpool from an idea he'd seen in Tegan Javanka's mind. By this account, although the Toymaker had meaningfully regenerated in a way that altered his personality, he kept the same face as before. This tallied with one account of the Doctor's subsequent encounter with the Toymaker in Blackpool, while another otherwise similar account of this event showed that the Toymaker had adopted a different physical appearance and voice altogether, which he would retain during an encounter with the Eighth Doctor. At any rate, the Toymaker began operating in the late 20th century Blackpool, indulging in the same impulse that had led to his wanderings. Using the Space Mountain Thrill Ride as his base of operations, he instructed Stefan, as well as Yasumoto and others, to begin the development of arcade cabinets with video games that killed the players that failed, with an electronic monster projected from the screen. The Toymaker goaded the Sixth Doctor and Perry Brown into a series of traps and games while they were on holiday in Blackpool. However, when the Doctor recognised the Toymaker's infinite loneliness, the Toymaker was agitated enough to cheat the Doctor of his game, and use the video game's murderous monster to kill him, but he was thwarted by the combined intervention of Perry and his other surviving prisoners. To ensure his video games could never be released to the people of Earth, the Doctor imprisoned the Toymaker in an impenetrable force field sustained by his own mental energy, which he considered inescapable. The Toymaker, now going by the moniker the Mandarin, began tracking the Entity, better known as Fenric, through the Arabian Plains, intending to challenge him to a game, but was unable to as Fenric was hurled into a non-world, the Shadow Dimensions by the Doctor, and so he had to travel there to challenge him. After agreeing on the stakes, the Mandarin would relinquish his body to Fenric if he lost, or Fenric would become the Mandarin's toy if he were to lose instead. Fenric chose four-dimensional chess as the game of choice, after playing for an unknowable duration of time, the advantage swaying between them, the Mandarin realised towards the endgame that he was inevitably going to lose. So, for the first time, he was able to comprehend the concept of a stalemate. After such an event happened, Fenric demanded a rematch, but the Mandarin declined, explaining they were equally matched, rendering a rematch pointless, and thus left the non-world, thanking Fenric for teaching him that perhaps winning wasn't everything after all. The Toymaker later captured the Doctor's TARDIS and took it to his toy shop, where he transformed the Eighth Doctor into a puppet, and the Doctor's companion, Charlie Pollard, was forced to take part in his riddle, but was tricked by the toy shop, which shrunk to 0% of its original size, and the body of the Toymaker was using destroyed within it. The Toymaker swore that when his new body had formed, he would take his revenge upon the Doctor and Charlie, who had escaped before the toy shop's destruction. Stirred up by Fenric as part of a game among the Elder Gods, the Toymaker somehow regained full control of his powers and lured several people into his domain, including the Seventh Doctor and his companions Ace and Hex. Working under the Doctor's leadership, the group of victims were apparently successful in defeating the Toymaker and imprisoning his essence in a doll. Each of them ate a small piece of the doll, dividing the Toymaker so that he would no longer be capable of using his powers. The Doctor concocted an elaborate plan to keep control over the fragments of the Toymaker in the minds of each group member until he withered away forever. As this plan involved the Doctor forgetting having even made the plan in the first place, he wound up short-circuiting it, and in the end, it was revealed the Toymaker had been in control all along, allowing himself to be absorbed into humanity so that he could feel what it was like to lose. Finally, one of the people involved, the chess master Swapnil Khan, 
managed to trap the Toymaker into a perpetual stalemate in his own dimension. But not before the Toymaker had reduced everyone except the Doctor, Ace, Hex, and Khan's daughter Queenie Glasscock to wooden dolls. After the 14th Doctor used the concept of salt to hold back the not-things at the edge of the universe, the initiation of a game resulted in the Toymaker being released from his domain, and allowed free reign into end space. The Toymaker played games with players from across the universe, including the Guardians of Time and Space, claiming that he had rewritten the Doctor's past into a jigsaw puzzle. He encountered the Master on the verge of death, who lost and became imprisoned within a gold tooth inside the Toymaker's mouth. The only person the Toymaker dared not play against was an entity he called the One Who Waits. The Toymaker, now taking on a new appearance, settled on Earth believing it and humanity were the ultimate playground. In 1925, he set up a toy store, and manipulated events so one of his dolls, Stooky Bill, became the first image viewed on a television screen. He also trapped Stooky Bill's buyer, Charles Bandagey, in his domain after he lost a game, turning him partially into a doll. The Toymaker immortalised the sound of Stooky Bill's laugh to spread insanity in the 21st century, as by then, technology and communication had reached the point where the giggle could be heard subliminally across all screens across the planet. The 1925 Toymaker soon met the 14th Doctor and Donna, luring them into his domain. He taunted the Doctor with a number of people who had died over the years, which enraged him enough for the Doctor to challenge the Toymaker to a game of cards. The Toymaker won. However, he was stopped from claiming his prize when the Doctor pointed out that, as he had beaten the Toymaker once before, the score was one all in a best out of three. This caused the Toymaker to swiftly disappear to 2023, crumpling his toy shop into a box with the Doctor and Donna in hot pursuit. The Toymaker arrived at Unit HQ, entirely unfazed by Unit as he danced and lip-synced while slaughtering anybody who attempted to stop him. He took control of Unit's galvanic beam they used to stop the Giggles broadcast, and fired on the Doctor, who had failed to convince the Toymaker to take his games elsewhere across the universe. This caused the Doctor to regenerate, as the Toymaker stated that by the rules, the final round should be played with a new Doctor. As the Toymaker watched with glee, he was instead dumbfounded when the Doctor bi-generated instead. The Toymaker then became engaged in an intense game of catch with both the 14th and 15th Doctors, the game ending with the defeat of the Toymaker when he failed to catch a throw from the 15th Doctor. As his prize, the 14th Doctor banished the Toymaker from existence forever, causing him to fold up into a suit that was contained in a box that Mel Bush pushed towards him. As he was trapped, the Toymaker warned that his legions were coming. The box was then taken by Kate Lethbridge-Stewart of Unit, who sealed it within their deepest vault to be bound in salt. The Toymaker's domain, however, lingered for a short time afterwards, allowing the 15th Doctor to bi-generate the TARDIS itself, by claiming it as his own prize for defeating the Toymaker. And that is the story of the Celestial Toymaker, one that has gone through many conflicting incarnations, spanning over 50 years of the show, but he has certainly made an impact no matter the appearance. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below, as we are so close to 1000 subscribers, and I really want to reach it before the end of the year. But as always, thanks for watching, and have a very Merry Christmas. I'll see you next year.